Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, Dr. Markin Sekia's talk on foreign affairs. Today we'll be discussing a very pertinent issue that is Hun Sen making his family dynasty in Cambodia. You know, Cambodia is a Southeast Asian country. It's a very critical country in Southeast Asia. In a sense, it is, you know, fast growing industry is contributing to the world's you know, government industry a lot. But all is not well in this country in the past. For the last 40 years, Hun Sen, the prime minister who recently left politics, has started making his own family dynasty. Let's talk about it. Before getting into the details, I will tell you a brief about the country. What is Cambodia? Where is Cambodia? What is it all about? Cambodia is a country located in Southeast Asia. The original name of Cambodia is derived from the Sanskrit Kambuja Desha or Kambuja. In fact, Kambuja was the name of an ancient North Indian tribe who used to control large parts of Southeast Asia, including Cambodia, before the emergence of Khmer Empire in that country. The name Kampuchea is derived from this name only. It's a country of more than 16.49 million people. It is bordered by Vietnam, Laos, Thailand, and Gulf of Thailand. It has an area of 1,81,035 square kilometers. The official language is Khmer, but Vietnamese is also spoken by its people. It was a French colony and got its independence only in 1953. Under King Shahanok, after independence, Cambodia became the Cambodia King, Kingdom of Cambodia. Now, when we talk about more about Cambodia, what we say is that its capital city is Nong Pan, a very, very beautiful city. Buddhism is officially declared as the state religion in a country. So more than 97% of the people practice Buddhism. Its economy is centrally dominated by the government making industry, but its tourism is also on the rise. It's rising very fast, you know. During the Khmer Rouge period, nearly 1.5 million Cambodians were either killed or died. Still, the memory of this haunts the country. Most of the Cambodians consider themselves as the descendants of Angkor Empire that spread across Southeast Asia some time back. Angkor is also known as Yashodharapura because it's capital city of Khmer Empire. This empire flourished from 9th to the 15th centuries in Cambodia, which literally ruled or vassalized most of Southeast Asia for a long time. Angkor Wat is one of the world's most famous tourist destinations and the Guinness World Records consider it as the largest religious structure in the world, which occupies 402 acres of land. It is worth watching, right? Now, let's get back how Hun Sen is trying to create his own political legacy and dynasty. Cambodia has witnessed a historic power transfer in four decades, but only from the father to the son. It is going to be just another hereditary rule only. No ordinary or elected member from the public is taking over. Samdek Hun Sen is simply changing hands within the family. He has formally left the levers of power after ruling the country for 38 years since 1985. Hun Sen, now 70 years, has become increasingly authoritarian along with his political party called Cambodian People's Party, CPP, 
at the helm of affairs for too long in Cambodia. For the first time, he flagged his intention in the year 2021, but did not specify the exact timeline for power transfer. But finally, he has transferred power to his son, Hun Manit, in this August 2023. The saddest part is that he has simply created another family political dynasty in Southeast Asia. Now, let's look at Hun Sen's Cambodia as he ruled the country for almost four decades. Over the years, Cambodia witnessed the end of civil war, sharp fall in poverty, and massive growth of the economy. However, his rule has so far been marred by violence, corruption, and mass elimination of opposition parties in the country. In 2017, John Sifton, the Asia Advocacy Director of the Human Rights Watch, wrote, maybe Hun Sen is getting tired. After all, he has been ruling Cambodia since 1985, and it probably has not been easy. To maintain his grip on power through five elections of varying fairness, since 1993, he has frequently resorted to violence, intimidation, buy-offs, and manipulation of the legislature and the courts. Tactics have shifted over time. The systematic unfettered violence of the 1990s, giving way to subtler methods today, more ballot rigging, misuse of the law, threats, etc. But the outcome of elections has always left Hun Sen in charge. Whatever the supposed results and whether or not observers considered the vote free and fair. This tell us the gory, you know, background of Cambodia under Hun Sen. He has run Cambodia like his family five dom. The opposition has literally been obliterated and other dissenting voices have been silenced either through state agencies or by secret agents under Hun Sen. His own self-serving agenda is very clear. In 2017, during the campaign of the local elections in Cambodia, Hun Sen publicly said to ensure the lives of millions of people, we are willing to eliminate 100 or 200 people because we have seen bitter past experience. Imagine how he was speaking in public like this. This reveals his intentions of continuing in power for a long time then. During the election, he was so obsessed in winning that he threatened to return to civil war if he loses the election. Whereas the opposition parties had promised to give USD 5 lakh to each of the 164 communes of the country. This kind of threats were made by Hun Sen in the past also. There was nothing new for Cambodians. But this time, he had gone a step further when he declared how many lives are expendable in pursuit of power. He told his countrymen that to ensure peace and to continue the development, the only option is the CPP must win elections at all stages. He wants his party to rule at every stage, like the way Chinese Communist Party does. But then the reality in China and in Cambodia are altogether different. Now, the big question in front of the world is that, will Hun Sen really retire? Now, the question is that, what will he do after his retirement? He won't go anywhere. Cambodia is his family business. In the past, he promised to rule till he attains 74 years, sometimes 90 years, and at times, he said, for an indefinite period. Thus, he has simply surprised many by fixing a clear deadline for transferring power to his son 
and he finally did it. It is learnt that he will take up several key positions after his formal exit from the office of the Prime Minister. Now he has exited power. He is likely to become the President of the Senate, President of the Supreme Council of the King, and finally the President of the CPP, that is Cambodian People's Party. It is very clear now how he will continue to wield enormous powers to influence the making of major policy decisions in Cambodia. It seems Hun Manit will be a formal or a titular head of the government and the real functionary would be Hun Sen only. It's quite possible and it has been happening since August 22nd when his son has taken over from the father. Hun Sen in reality, let's look at this. Hun Sen, in all these years, carefully outmaneuvered the high offices of the global governance institutions like the UN and many. He also used to manage diplomats from foreign nations and particularly donor nations to simply pretend that Cambodia is a genuine democracy. And in the name of democracy, he has gathered enough power to sideline public opinion. He has particularly cornered the opposition and in fact eliminated it altogether. Cambodia's party control courts are a serious threat to government critics, independent media and the opposition leaders. Truly, he has managed politics, business and economy of the country with an iron fist for decades. In 2020, a 284-page report named Cambodia's Dirty Dozen, a long history of rights abuses by Hun Sen's generals, by the Human Rights Watch, clearly says that generals in the security forces are responsible for serious violations of human rights in Cambodia under Hun Sen. The report spotlights 12 senior generals who forms the backbone of Hun Sen's authoritarian empire and are responsible for abusing rights and eliminating the opposition parties. Now, friends, let's look at the new prime minister that is Hun Manit. Hun Manit, the eldest son of Hun Sen, has taken over as the prime minister of Cambodia from his father in August as announced by the letter in a televised speech. These all have happened only after the resounding victory of Hun Sen's political party, that is the CPP, in the parliamentary election in the last month. His son Manit is just 45 years and many of the Southeast Asian political observers say that he has a long way to go. Indeed, he has been groomed for the job for quite a long time by his father. Currently, Manit is serving as a four-star general and commander of the Royal Cambodian Army. With a strong overseas education background in the UK and the US, unlike his father, he speaks very good English and can handle diplomatic affairs much better. For the last two years, he has been actively engaging with foreign dignitaries, officials and lawmakers simply make the world aware that he is taking over the reins of Cambodia soon. Now, it seems Washington is looking forward to Manet. Washington is now interested in how Manet will navigate the recent deadlocks between the US and China. Cambodia is an old ally of China and the latter is the largest investor in that country. On the other hand, US is the biggest trading partner of Cambodia. In early career days, Hun Manit received training at the US Military Academy at West Point in New York. Further, 
He also studied masters in economics from New York University and a PhD in the same subject from the University of Bristol from UK. So his Western linkages are from military and academic perspectives. That is very clear. Now, the pertinent question is that how he will manage an empty China global narrative marshaled by the Western nations led by the US and its allies in the Asia Pacific and in other frontiers of the world. It's time for Manich to maintain a balance between the two global superpowers, the US and China. Along with this, Cambodia has to see to it that its long-term and short-term goals in the region and at the global stage are achieved. Now, the family dynasty in Cambodia is certain. It's all clear now. Meanwhile, the opposition and the critics of the CPP and Hun Sen are not hopeful about Hun Manit. To them, Cambodia will go deep down in the part of family rule and autocracy in the name of democracy. Sam Rainsy, the exiled opposition leader of the opposition Cambodian National Party, commented that Hun Manit will not take the country towards a democratic future. And it is true because he will be working hard to sustain the legacy of his father and continue the family rule in this Southeast Asian nation. He will have to abide by what his father says. And of course, Hun Manit will utilize his father's decades of administrative experience to sustain and the family rule in Cambodia. Now, the question is that, did Hun Sen retire? The real problem is that the indispensable Hun Sen would be lurking behind the scene to keep a tight grip on power in the country. He will not go anywhere. The remnants of this former Camaro cadre will continue to be visible everywhere in Canada. Cambodia, neither he will allow anyone, including his son, to demolish his nearly 40 years of powerful legacy. Manit, the hill to Cambodia's autocracy needs to urgently balance the power equations in the country the way his maverick father has done for decades. More than anything else, this budding economy and one of Asia's famous manufacturing hubs for Western MNCs demand political stability. Hope Hun Manit would understand it much better than anyone else. So friends, this is how in the last two months we have seen transfer of power from an autocratic leader called Hun Sen to his son Hun Manit. This is simply a transfer of power and that is within the family as I said. This is not transfer of power to a popular leader elected by the public. Yes, it is true that Cambodian People's Party wins popular elections. But as I have told you during the lecture, there is virtually no election. Election is for only one party. So people have no choice. As I said, opposition leaders are all been exiled or killed or are been jailed. So there is no voice of the people. The voice of the people is completely you know, taken over by the Cambodian's People's Party. Now let's look for stability in Cambodia. It's a very, very crucial country in Southeast Asia. Hope Hun Manit will listen to what people want, unlike his father. Friends, thank you so much for listening to me and watching my channel. I simply request you to watch my other two channels, Dr. Mark Hansaki's talk on national affairs and political science by Dr. Markham. I need your support and encouragement so that I can keep bringing, you know, new topics of importance to all of you. Thank you so much and bye-bye.